The law is so badly written. It's got these holes in it. And it's concerning as a gun owner and as a taxpayer. Frankly, the RCMP is wasting their time. What's the problem? If these were military firearms, I'm not saying they are, but if they were, what's the issue? Has there been a robbery with these that's somehow more violent than another firearm? So where is the issue? Where's the crime that's not on paper? John Ever is explaining one of the, well, a few of the big problems with the RCMP looking to reclassify certain firearms. We told you about this last week in relation to the Swiss Arms Classic. Uh, the RCMP confirming what had long been rumored on uh, different forums on the internet that the Canadian Firearms Program is reviewing the status of the Swiss Arms PE Classic Green. The re review is currently underway. They went on to say if the Canadian Firearms Program, the CFP, forms an opinion that a firearm is restricted or prohibited in accordance with the criminal code, the CFP would issue a bulletin to businesses and publicize the issue to firearms license holders. What could that mean? That could mean private property confiscated. Well, that report brought in a lot of, a lot of reaction, including some saying, just look at this gun, it should be banned. Others saying, hold on a minute. One of those is Tim. He is a, a member of the Calgary Swiss Rifle Club, joins us now from Calgary and asked us to, for security reasons, not reveal his full identity. Tim, thanks for joining us today. And, and I want to ask you about that off the top. You and several others wrote in and said, this is just a, a standard rifle that we enjoy using for different properties in terms of practicing in terms of target shooting but others said look at that gun of course it needs banned is that a valid reason to ban a firearm how it looks i don't believe that it is the uh, firearm that we're talking about is a swiss made high precision firearm that is capable of incredible accuracy so what, what do you use it for then you you are part of a club that specifically enjoys this rifle and others like it, the, the Swiss Classic Green, the Swiss Classic Black and others. Why specifically this rifle and what do you use it for? Well, it's, uh, what's unique about the rifle is that it is a Swiss made high precision firearm capable of incredible accuracy. Uh, I belong to one of eight Swiss rifle clubs across Canada that engage in an internationally uh, sanctioned and recognized target shooting competition that uh, there's similar club stars in Europe and in Asia. And we all engage in exactly the same practice, which is uh, international target shooting done specifically with this firearm. Is there a, a question about this firearm, though, in the way that you use it and the way that you and your colleagues have them, being made fully automatic? Because that is the claim of some. Well, you can make this fully automatic very easily. Therefore, it should be banned. Never mind the fact that making it fully automatic would be against the law. Um, they just want to say it could, this could happen, therefore ban all of them. Yeah, I, I think the reality is, and the reality that the RCMP will find out, will show that without detailed technical knowledge of this firearm, access to a CNC machine shop, knowing how to work a CNC machine, uh, it would be very, very difficult to convert what is a, a sporting purpose designated firearm one that is specifically purpose-built to be semi-automatic uh, to a fully automatic firearm. So concerns I can understand for some who maybe don't know the sport, don't know the firearm, that the looks of the firearm could be misleading. But uh, the real concerns, the simple reality is this would be very difficult to convert to fully automatic. And at $4,000 a rifle, you have to ask, why would you want to do this? Well, why would you want to uh, risk ruining your rifle? Why would exactly. you risk, want to risk going to jail? Yes. A lot of people don't get that distinction between fully automatic and semi-automatic. Uh, and we've been over it before, but maybe we can talk about it again. Because I, I've said many times on the show, I, I don't have a license. I, I don't own any firearms. But I understand them because I've used them. A lot of people sure. haven't. And so they don't get that a rifle that looks like the Swiss Arm Classic is really no different than a semi-automatic hunting rifle. It, can that's you correct. explain that? Yeah, that's correct. Semi-automatic means that with each pull of the trigger, a round is fired. Uh, fully automatic means with a singular press of the trigger, multiple rounds are fired. That's the only difference. In function, there's no difference between this firearm that we're talking about and any other semi-automatic firearm offered for sale in Canada. It, it's just the... the accuracy that you mentioned earlier but it sounds like you pay for that accuracy that's a four thousand oh, sure dollars a rifle that's uh it's quite the pretty penny yeah um 
I, I want to bring in a, another firearm that, that's very popular, and it, it's not one specific to your gun club, but it relates to the larger issue of uh, the RCMP deciding whether or not they will reclassify. And, and that's a, a checkmate rifle. In, in a report that was issued a little while ago, the RCMP talked about the fact that in their view, it should be prohibited completely. If we can bring up uh, that graphic right now, this is, uh, it was shocking to me that this was put into a report. The family of VZ-58 rifles, existing criminal code regula regulations, permit these firearms to be non-restricted or restricted, a case could be made that they should be classified prohibited. Does it bother you that the RCMP is actively lobbying to ban certain types of firearms based on how they look rather than how they operate, that they are lobbying to ban certain firearms when they're the enforcers and the testers and the ones that decide whether something gets into the country in the first place? I think what the RCMP have uh, the requirement to do is to look at the true interests of public safety and decide if their actions actually meet that requirement. And in the case of uh, some other firearms, the Norinco Type 97 or the BD-38 that they reclassified uh, fairly recently from restricted to a prohibited firearm, they probably have some just cause to do this. When you look at the Swiss Arms rifle, which has been imported legally as a purpose-built semi-automatic firearm, uh, sold in Canada legally for 12 years and there's been no recorded incidents of this gun being used in any crime or ever having been converted to fully automatic, you have to ask if that really suits the general interest of the public safety. There, uh, that's there's, that's well, there's, my concern. There's some talk that uh, there was a shipment that came in of this Swiss Arms rifle that was not properly modified and it may have been a kind of a, a jimmied uh, modification to take it from a, uh, a fully automatic to semi. If that's the case, do you ban all of them or just deal with the, the bad ones that were imported? Because from my, from my take on where the RCMP is headed, they're headed towards banning everything. Is that the right way to go if somebody brought in a bad batch? Well, and, and that is certainly on two levels, that's the larger concern here, is that this is the start of a larger trend. Uh, again, sometimes the RCMP has exercised good judgment uh, and we would want to be partners with the RCMP to express our concerns. Uh, and sometimes in the case of the Swiss Arms Rifle, I would have some concerns about that. To your earlier point about the, uh, the firearm, about we're talking about less than 1% of all of the rifles that have ever been brought in. Uh, some of these rifles had an upper receiver that uh, the RCMP are concerned may have had some machining done at the factory and converted back to semi-automatic. The factory in Switzerland has already offered to identify the serial numbers of these rifles, when they were imported, to whom they were imported. Uh, they've offered to exchange the rifles and give uh, the owner of that firearm exactly the same purpose-built semi-automatic rifle that has been imported into Canada for the past 12 years. So the factory in Switzerland is basically offering an option to resolve this. Yeah. I would ask that the RCMP would exercise good judgment and work with us in the firearms community to take them up on that. Well, hopefully they will. Uh, hopefully we're not uh, looking at more gun grabbing ahead. Tim, it, it's good speaking with you and uh, all the best to you and your club. Thanks so much. Thanks very much for having me, Brian. Yeah.